Huh? All right. You may be seated. Uh, we have been looking at this subject, this matter, trying to, you know, take ourselves back to the word of God. Now, by the, res by the reason of the recent happening, I know so much has been going on on Facebook. Is it? So much has been going on social media. People are beginning to say many things. People are beginning to think many things, doubt many things. And uh, as it were, People are beginning to query the word of God. And sometimes, some of the things that the people are saying seems to make logical sense. Is it? Eh? It makes logical sense, but it doesn't make scriptural sense. Now, I want you to understand something that something can make logical sense, but it will not make scriptural sense. Are you with me? Come on, are you with me? Something you are thinking or somebody, something that somebody is telling you may make, script, may, may make logical sense. May make sense in the natural, but doesn't make sense in the spiritual. I want you to know that it is not today that the marriage institution has been under attack. It just the only thing now is just that the attack has amplified because the devil wants to do a serious damage to that institution because the devil knows that if he does a damage that so much depends on that institution. Hey, is somebody hearing what I'm saying? So much depends on that what institution. So much, so much depends on that institution. Uh, in recently, recently, I also heard about something that happened in one of the schools, high brass schools in Nigeria. And if, that, if you trace that thing, you find out that part of the problem emanated from the home. Are you with me? Part of the problem did what? It's from the home. So, everything that the devil is doing is that he wants to attack the home because once the home is attacked, even the church will be affected. Hey, are you with me? The society will be affected. You know, this morning, I, when I was coming to work, I saw some women in black and they were demonstrating, you know, and the, the reason for the demonstration, you know, I tried to peep, I tried to find out because... I saw some of them carrying play card and all that. So I wanted to really know what they were agitating for. And I realized that the reason for their agitation is because of the killings, the court clashes that have been happening in North Bank. You know, I think almost every day people are being killed. And even in broad daylight, I, I was told that last week they killed somebody almost in front of just almost in, not SRS Junction. I think they were saying that person was killed just opposite Mamatina's somewhere around opposite Mamatina's shop. In the broad daylight, like that, they tried to shoot him, he didn't go, and then they use rock or stone to finish up the job. So and and the women were matching, they wore black. It's a noble cause, okay? It's a very noble cause that they are. In fact, I was saying in my heart, I wish they, they had mobilized more persons, okay? But as good as that is, I only said that, brought that up to tell you that the people may not realize that that problem emanated from the home. Are you getting what I'm saying? 
Are you getting what I'm saying? That a cop boy, you know, even though I know there are times that some persons in, in rare occasions, you, you can see a situation where somebody was raised well, somebody was impacted with the right values, and then probably by the time they go out and mingle with the society, they changed, okay? And then they turn into something else. But you find out that most times that some of these vices start from the home and people don't pay attention to it. Are you with me? Are you with me? Now, let me tell you something as simple as you see a child. It, it looks very simple. Now, let me, let me give you this. Maybe something that is kept at home. Maybe food stuff. Or let's, 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 and the child just goes without asking for permission from the parents and just goes to the fridge, opens the fridge, carries the thing, eat. <laughs> eh? Hey, are you with me? You know, something as simple as that. Do you know, if you don't start from that level to begin to, you know, educate that child that this is wrong and this is not acceptable, before you know it, the thing begins to migrate. You know, a child may do something, you just say, no, he's a child. And you just summarize it by saying, leave the boy alone, leave the girl alone. He's still a what? He's still a child. Now, the question is, when do we start, when do you think is the right time to start in, you know, inculcating the right value into a child? You know, that's not where we're going. What I'm trying to say is this, you find out that the the marriage institution is under attack. And some of the things are being said. You know, what I realize is that when the devil wants to change or shift the goalposts, <laughs> do you understand what I mean now? When the devil wants to say something, when wants to change something, wants to twist the word of God, he, the thing will, be, he will begin to bombard the mind of the people. The thing may, may come like, you know, be bombarding the mind of the people. Let me something like God hates divorce. God also hates abuse. And then why they are trying to tell you, okay, if the thing, if there is an abuse, you can run away from your family. It doesn't even matter the abuse. And you see, they are they are even beginning to amplify the abuse. Say what of the emotional abuse. If somebody is supposed to stay, there is argument, people are arguing, people are saying many things. Now, and you know, some of the things, people begin to downplay the word of God. Sometimes people, the goal here is to begin to make the word of God as if the word of God is no longer relevant in this 21st century. Hey, are you with me? So, and funny enough, mo many, many people are gullible. Many people don't know the word of God. So, we begin to, we begin to assimilate those things. Now, I was analyzing what, what in fact, I heard one, one preacher preaching one time that two, a husband and wife they were always fighting. And you know what he said? He said, God told him to go and dissolve that marriage. Did you hear him? He said, God did what? Told him to go and do what? Dissolve the marriage. And then he said, he went, dissolved the marriage. He said, now the man is happily married somewhere. And the woman is happily married somewhere. Did you see? And you know, the thing makes so much sense. You know, I told you, I said, some things can make logical sense. But they don't make spiritual what? Or scriptural sense. And people were, oh! You see, now somebody can even be logical and say, look, it therefore means that it's actually God. That they are happy to the person they married to. Means actually that the first marriage. <laughs> and people will buy into those things and, they will, and they're happy. They will be very happy. In fact, I was told something that there was another meeting where somebody, a preacher, said something again. He said, ah, that before they have told people God hates divorce. 
But in now, they want to tell people God likes divorce. And people were shouting. <laughs> you know? In fact, you know sometimes, I just know that people don't know the word of God. If you want to use the response of the congregation to measure how well you are teaching the word of God, you are, you are done for. Now, let me give you an example. You know, I've seen this thing happen in a particular congregation. Somebody will come and preach. Let me give you a typical example. You know, I will just see those things. I will just, be, I will just stay like this and be watching. Let me give you an example. Maybe somebody comes this week and start preaching a message and say, look, there is nothing like a sense of cause. Preach, preach, preach some things. Hey, people, you see people shout, yeah, Rema, yeah. Yeah, they stand and say, that's right. Then, in fact, the person will now say, there's something like, uh, you know, there's a, a doctrine of the firstborn. Huh? Do you know there's one doctrine that some set of people preach about firstborn? Every firstborn needs deliverance. <laughs> Anyway, I'm not going to go into that. So, the person can finish that. And then, the following day, not even following week, they can have another preacher who comes and start telling stories about a central cause, a sen- this, the same congregation. This is the, yay! The same, not that they imported another congregation, the same congregation. So, what do you think is the problem? Eh? Hey, hey. Come on. Do you understand where I'm going? I'm going somewhere. I, I just want you to understand. Why, why I'm going there is that because people don't know the word of God. You know, my wife and I attended a meeting, a program somewhere, and somebody was preaching on God's visitation. I said, see, the only way to get God to visit you is when you sow a seed. And then, he now began to pray, began to teach from Solomon that Solomon loved the Lord. And he looked at that and said, how can you, hey, how can you say Solomon loved the Lord? We all know that Solomon loved women. He wrote that Solomon loved the Lord though, and he, he condemned it. <laughs> And not only did he condemn it, if I, and when he said that, people stood up. Rema, 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 rema. My, I said, what? And amazingly, the church where this person was preaching this, I didn't, I didn't even believe my eyes that the people were standing and saying, rema. See, it was out of respect for the pastor because the pastor invited us. They were having this. Out of respect for the pastor, I would have carried my Bible like this and and just walk away from that place. Now, the person now said, he said, that look, eh, in fact, that he's going to produce a movie on the visitation of Solomon. That Solomon w- was with five women when God visited him. He was with five women on the bed. <laughs> he said that Solomon was with five women on the bed. He was, Solomon was with five women. And God even did not bother that Solomon was, was with five women. God visited. Do you, you see, you know, some people say something. They don't even know what they are saying in what, what they are saying in what they didn't say. <laughs> you, you don't know that somebody has left that auditorium and said, Kai, fornication, here I come. Fornication, have me. That's, the person initially was fornicating, eh? I was, Kai, God, deliver me. But as he left that meeting, he said, God, we're together. No challenge. <laughs> ah, if Solomon was with five women, my own is that I'm even with one person per day. We're together. I'm even better than Solomon. <laughs> so you see, the devil likes shifting the goalposts. And that is one of the things that the devil is trying to do with this circumstance to begin to shift the goalposts 
to begin to bend the mind of people. Now, God hates divorce. And they are trying to say, God does also like abuse. So that means, if there is a just bolt out. Now, let me tell you, I began to reason. I said, do you know somebody can begin to interpret? Let's assume you, you are looking for a job. Huh? You are looking for a job. And then, by the time you went to where you, want to, where you applied, and the person said, look, this job is yours. I like your resume. I like your CV. Beautiful. But, you see, the only thing that will help you, to, that will make you to get this job is if you sleep with me. Huh? You know, you can begin to bring and say, God hates fornication. And God also hates not working. He, ha- he hates joblessness. And he hates poverty. So, because God hates, <laughs> hates joblessness and poverty, he wouldn't mind me fornicating so that I can get a job. Hey, those two things, do they make, do, can you put them on the same balance? No, do, no, you don't understand what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that the person that is reasoning that if God hates divorce and hates abuse, if there is abuse, we should divorce. Don't, it didn't, tell somebody can also begin to think because God hates I, joblessness, I should fornicate and get a job. Or I should fornicate and retain my job. But that's the, that's the ideology that people are trying to paint. And people are buying into it. So many things are being said. And people are not asking themselves what is the position of God on this matter. You see, for you, in everything, you must begin to ask yourself, what is, what is God's position? And you only take, the position you take is the position of God, not even the position of your emotions. Not even the position of your feelings. Not even the position of the society. Now, let me tell you this. Can I also tell you something? Not even the position of your experience. <laughs> you see, your experience is not superior to the word of God. And that's why we began to look at the read several things and they are not new. We began to read the scriptures and there are things that we've already been sharing with us here. First of all, trying to let us to understand that marriage is not a trophy. First of all, the first thing that we said is that marriage is a beautiful thing, okay? Is it not? Eh? Hey, is it not? Yes, marriage is, is an amazing thing. It's a beautiful thing. It's, it's wonderful. Then, we also came to the realization that marriage is not a trophy. Marriage is not an achievement. You know, in our generation, in our time and age, people will begin to bombard you, harass you, and say that you have an anti-marital spell. Once you are 30, you are not yet married. People harass you, harass you, harass you. You begin to feel inadequate until anything that comes, you marry. Hey, are, are we together? Do you understand what I'm saying? You see, it's one of the things... I know that, you know, sometimes these things are quite challenging okay do you understand what i'm saying sometimes they're, they're very challenging because that's how the society have been structured so you are seeing yourself confronted with these things day after day as you go out people ask you when will you marry you come to the church they ask you when will you marry they say all of you come out 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 anything Kai, go leave him and let him go leave her and let her go Poof, poof marry in fact they so there was one one one, one video that was that, that came up on social media. The man, the man brought out all the all the women, all the men, all those. He, he was slapping their head. Marry, pa, marry. Leave, don't spoil, spoil, stop spoiling it. Marry, boom, marry, boom, marry, boom, marry, boom. He was sla- if you see the way he was slapping them. I said, people, you see, that is what. 
your life will be subject to abuse when you refuse to know the word of God by yourself. Can I say that again? You are going to be subject to abuse. People you, will use you as a specimen. People will use you to, they will use you as a tool if you don't know the word of God. You can, you can imagine a, somebody, a woman, a man and a wife. <laughs> okay, let me give you two instances. Somebody will tell you and say, look, you are looking for husband or you are looking for wife. He said, look, the, your deliverance will be conducted in River Benue. And for that deliverance to happen, you are going to be naked. You like this. You. You will follow a man. And, and the man says he is a man of God. He's a prophet. And you like this. You, you, you are going. That's, nothing is telling you how stupid you are. Permit me. Nothing is actually telling you, oh thou fool, where are thou going? You, you are not hearing anything like that. In fact, that you didn't hear that shows the degree of your foolishness. Then you go, and the man, he start to, they will be touching your private part, put hand inside. And you, you say, amen, 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 amen. You know, they've, they've shown some of those kind of things on social media, where somebody say he's casting out demon from somebody, and he's kissing, kissing the woman. Touching, and the people congregation say, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Amen, Amen. It's not a white garment church, it's a Pentecostal church. Or is it the abuse that a man, they say that they, they are trying to finish one demon in their family? The, the, the deliverance will happen by 12 midnight. It's inside the man's bedroom, but the man will be downstairs. And the prophet and his wife will be in the room doing deliverance. And the man is not supposed to be part of that deliverance. But yet, it's a family deliverance. Power. <laughs> power, power. <laughs> That's, they came for family deliverance, so, but the deliverance will, be, will, be, will come through the woman. The man will be downstairs. I'm not telling you African magic. Real life story. And, and he'll be downstairs. The woman and the... the, the, the yes, will be downstairs. And the woman and the prophet, so-called prophet, man, will be inside this room. Yes, doing the deliverance. And this deliverance is done with penis. Okay. I need, we need to... You think... That, they don't. They, that, they say that they, they need the anointing inside to break, so that the fruit of the womb can come. Don't forget what I told you. I said, if you refuse to know God, be prepared for abuse. What did I say? Can you help me preach that to your neighbor? Preach it to your neighbor. People will abuse you. People will abuse you and say, my anointing, there is mantle. They will, they will sweat and cut it, cut it, and say, 50, 50,000, come and collect mantle. There is another one, key of David, that, that have landed. <laughs> Hi! The devil has dealt with us. Then somebody will come, yeah, man, he will collect somebody's singlet. Drop 50k, 100k, go home. You are an idol worshiper. Who, who, what did I say? You are an idol worshiper. Where, where, where did you see Jesus do things like that? Handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from them. The people never paid. And it wasn't even glorified. You see, people must understand part of the reason why those things were done is because, you know, the distance, trying to. It's not a doctrine. Are you getting what I'm saying? 
And Jesus never caught his singlet. And I started telling people, 50,000. Coconut service, apple service. Now see, let me tell you something. You must, you must come to a point where you know that the word of God is the final authority. Are you with me? Come on, are you with me? The word of God is the what? Is the final authority. And you see, the people who carry this gospel from Jesus, we tell you, see, Apostle Paul, we said, look, anything that I, I said, he said, even if I name jail, comes to tell you anything that is not in this world. He said, let that angel be a cause that you should not, you shouldn't pay attention to the angel. He said, even him himself. And you see, Apostle Paul, we, we, we write us and say, test every spirit. In fact, the Bible, Apostle Paul began to compare two churches. He said, the Berean Christians, they were more noble, more excellent than the other Christians. And the reason being that everything that Apostle Paul taught them, they went back to cross-check with the word of God. But you know these days, we don't even want people to cross-check what we're saying with the word of God. We say, Papa has spoken. Papa. Papa. So, the word of Papa is exalted above the word of God. When God himself subjected himself to his word, you know, the God, even the name of God, God subjected himself to his word. And yet, we exalt the words of men above the word of God. So, you, even your experience, like I told you, doesn't negate the word of God. So we said, a prudent wife is where? It's from the Lord. So we, we dealt with the issue of that divorce and looked at it from the word of God. I, I think let, we're, we're reading uh, Corinthians chapter 7. Okay, before we, we, we go back to Corinthians chapter 7, first of all, I also want you to know that marriage is God's idea. Are you with me? Come on, are you, are you with me? What did I say? Marriage is what? Whose idea? Was it Union Greek that instituted marriage? Who instituted marriage? Genesis, Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, 19 to 25. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, show you one funny thing now. Genesis 2, 19. Okay, now, he said, And out of the ground, the Lord formed every beast of the what? Of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he will call them. To see what he will do what? And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. 20. And Adam gave names to all the cattle, to all the fowl of the earth, and to every beast of the field. But I wanted to see but. But for Adam, there was not what? There was not what? So that means they were actually looking for help meat among the beast. Hey. Is it, is it okay for us to think that way? From, from what was written. Now, can I tell you something? It's possible in your search you can pick a beast. <laughs> hey, did you see that? The, the, the Bible said they brought, they brought to see what Adam will do what? We call. Please pay attention. I want you to pay attention. To see. So that means if Adam has seen lion and say wife, 
that, that will become the name thereof. <laughs> so, that means in that search, they brought all those things and as all of them passed, there was not found what? And help meet for him. So, they can't be saying, they, for them to say they, they, they didn't find something, that means they were actually looking for the something. Hey, 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 are you with me? So that means among the beasts, the fowl of the earth, they were actually looking for. <laughs> Can I tell you something? That in your journey of life, many things will be passing. Eh? As you are growing, you are going to be encountering many people. Encountering beasts, encountering lion, encountering tortoise, encountering parrot, encountering many things. And uh, <laughs> all those things, they are trying to check your spiritual IQ. What you are going to call them. Now, I need to say this. That you met somebody in church does not mean that you have found a wife or found a husband. <laughs> Hello? Are you with me? What did I say? That even went for a program, you saw that it was a person that led the song and people fell. Prakata karakatapa. <laughs> That's be, as the person held mic, the atmosphere changed. The atmosphere changed, and even you, you fell under power. And then, by the time after service, the person saw you and said, "Oh, oh, damn, sir!" Is that the Lord is saying something? And then you say, "Kai." Is there, is there, what are we to pray about again? The person that moved this power, can he kill a fly? <laughs> See, what you don't know is that there are many dimensions of the spirit of God. There is spirit of mind. There is spirit of power. There is spirit of cancer. That somebody might have spirit of mind. Now, I don't want to say that the person doesn't have the spirit of wisdom. But let me put it, coin it in another way. Because in the New Testament, things are a little bit different. It's possible somebody is giving expression to the spirit of mind. But he's not giving expression to the spirit of wisdom and cancer. Hey, are you with me? Are you with me? So, don't confuse yourself. And don't even marry somebody and say, ah, the, past, the father is a bishop. The father is a bishop does not translate that the person is a bishop. A prudent wife is what? From the Lord. So, first of all, I want you to establish something in your heart as you live today that the word of God is the final authority are you getting what I'm saying? In every circumstance. And I also want you to establish something that something can make logical sense, but it doesn't make scriptural sense. Don't write it somewhere. Don't forget it. So that when somebody gives you a rhetoric and the thing is sounding powerful, you know, we're talking with one of our daughters the other day, and we, we told her something uh, and I remember making a statement. I said, look, don't make destiny decisions from your emotions. Don't be sentimental when it comes to making destiny decisions. Don't, don't try to be... You see, do you know that in life that there are certain decisions that you will take that even you, you don't like it, but it's good for you. Huh? Can I give you a very typical example? Very typical example. How many of you like injection? 
Eh? You put your, bring your butters, they inject you. How many of you like it? You say, that is my hobby. The thing I like, I like it more than pandediam. Can I see your hand? <laughs> but you see, when you are sick, and your sickness requires injection, one, even the doctor will not be sentimental. And that is why sometimes when it comes to treating people, they don't want doctors to treat their relations. Because sentiment can come in. Are you with me? So, that you are crying. The, with, the, with the doctor say, okay, oh, he's crying. Can, let's allow him to go as he's crying. In fact, they will deceive you and sympathize with your crying, yet they will inject you. Is it not? Yes, sir. They will say, oh, oh, it will not pain you. It will, it's a lie. It will pain you. <laughs> <laughs> it will pain you. It's a lie. Sometimes for healing to come, you will go through pain. You know, I was told about a person who fractured his hand and then they, they didn't treat it well so the hand was one kind and then when he met uh, a surgeon or something they told him that the first thing that they would do is that they would break this hand what again <laughs> that is for to the beginning of the repair is that they would do what they would break it again and that means, as that hand is there, they do it. Quack. They may be smiling and say, oh, oh boy, ah, don't worry. In fact, sometimes you may not even know when they will do that thing they are trying to deceive you so that they can do. Quack. You will not know when they will break the hand or the finger. Then the healing process, they will now come and arrange it. So, I brought all this just to help you to understand that sometimes for you to take the right decisions, you may even be dying emotionally. And yet, the decision is what? Is what? Is correct. Don't use your emotions to judge whether a decision you are taking is, is correct or not. Are you with me? Sometimes you are, you are walking out of a relationship. Even you, a part of you is dying. But you know that this relationship is... I need to walk away from what? From it. It's okay you cry. What did I say? <laughs> you are thinking I would say don't cry. Cry, cry, cry. It's okay, cry. Cry. But don't cry for more than two days. <laughs> cry, cry, cry. And say cry. Oh, cry, 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 cry. It's okay, cry. <laughs> but when you finish crying, Clean your tears and move on. And you know what will happen is that 15 years down the line, you will look back and realize and thank God that you walked away. Is it, are, you, are you with me? All right. So, we read that place. Now, give, give us back Genesis. I, I want to establish some truths that, one, that marriage was not instituted by anybody. Are you with me? That God, marriage wasn't even Adam's idea. Are you with me? Adam did not go to God and say, look, I need a wife. No. It was God's idea. And then, if it is God's idea, that means it is God that will also give us the template in running his idea. Are you with me? Hey, are you with me? Are you with me? Now, let me ask you a question. God, okay, Godwin is the one playing keyboard. Do you know this keyboard more than the people that made this keyboard? Is it possible for you to start telling them now and say, look, oh, <laughs> because of the newest technology, you say, this is now the on button. Eh? Can you, is it possible for you to do that? You say, no, this thing is, is where we're supposed to be owning the keyboard. Or you can say this sax is now what? It's now a keyboard. You see, 
if you want to know about something, it is the manufacturer that you, you meet. Is it not? Hey, are you with me? You see, sometimes people might even educate you or train you from their experience, not from the word of God. Hey, hey, are you with me? Okay, now, I, I was talking with a lady, she's married now. She was getting married to a pastor and then the husband-to-be or the mother-in-law to be happens to also be a pastor's wife. Eh? Are you with me? Then, he started giving the daughter-in-law to be cancer. Powerful cancer. What did I say? Powerful cancer. And he said, look, <laughs> my daughter, <laughs> I've been in this thing long enough, so you need to listen to me. He said, look, as you get into this, it's not everything that you have that you let your husband know. Did you hear that cancer? Coming from who? You see, is everything you tell. You get powerful cancer. I said, what? So, she was not trying to verify what she was told by a pastor's wife. So, you know, in that case, that's what I, you have to use the word of God. You see, it, the issue now is not that it is somebody who is who has been 20 years in marriage. 20 years in marriage does not mean somebody knows marriage. Even though it's supposed to translate into wisdom. But you see, there was something that Job told or either Job or his friends told him. He said, look, he was thinking that that age is supposed to teach wisdom. But it's not all the time that age teaches what? Wisdom. So, it is also not all the time that, you know, age, you have 25 years in marriage. 25 years in marriage may not translate into wisdom in marriage. Hey, are you with me? It may not translate into what? Wisdom in marriage. And that's one of the reasons why what you must be using to check whatever you are hearing is the what? Is the what? The the originator of that institution. So the Bible says, for him there was not found a help suitable. And God now went into the operation of getting a wife. The first thing that God did was to put Adam to what? To sleep. Now can I tell somebody here, your beginning of getting a good wife or a good husband begins by ending the agitation the anxiety hey are you with me it begins by doing what go to sleep can you tell your neighbor can you help me tell your neighbor go what sleep you're, you're being alive all the time agitating hey this I, I'll be 20 30 next month do you know 2030? You don't know it. You are not living in this country then. You say, I'll, I'll be 35. God, next month, I'll be 35. You see, that agitation, you can't find a wife or a husband like that. Because you see, that agitation, what it will make you to do is to settle for anything. And you see, the devil can take advantage of that, your agitation. And also, you see, if you are awake, <laughs> can you imagine they are doing surgery and you are awake? Eh? You know you will die if you are awake and you are doing surgery on you. Do you actually know that you, you may die? Can you imagine you are alive, they come and cut you? You don't kite. <laughs> you will hold the doctor's hand, and two of you will be fighting with the with the <laughs> the instrument. So that's why before they want to do that operation, they will put you. If they don't put you to sleep, at least they will 
paralyze that place so that you will not know what is happening. So you see, God was the first, not just the first surgeon, there's a specialty in medicine. The people that give uh, anesth- anesthesia. So, anesthetics, yes. That's, that's the word. The anesthetics. He was the first person that did what? Anest- the, the Adam. Adam slept. Then he became also the first surgeon. Pah! He opened him up. <laughs> so, the first thing to do is that in your agitation, you can settle for anything. So, the first thing is to go to what? Go to sleep. Can you tell your neighbor, go to sleep? And you see, another reason why you also need to go to sleep because you may begin to prescribe certain things to God. <laughs> like, one of, one of my... <laughs> One brother that I know, he said, he said, he said, he's a Yibo fair. Lord. He said, look, if it is not fair. But can I tell you something? That when it comes to destiny matters, fairness has no, it doesn't have any equation. There's no, it's not inside the equation. Now, does it mean, I know we have, we all have our likes and dislikes. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? Eh? Some like it fat. Some like it slim. Some like it short. Some are, are turned on by short people. Some are turned on by tongue. <laughs> no, but these are realities. Hey, you see, that's the problem with church people. When they are saying something... <laughs> You know, see, I've heard a minister say, look, him, he likes the person short because he wants to be looking at the person's head. <laughs> hey, hey. We all have our different preferences. Are you with me? But as good as those your preferences are, one of the first things you must do is that you must surrender those your preferences to who? That's why you must go to sleep. Hey, are you with me? That is why you must do what? Go to sleep. Because it's good to have those preferences. But you find out that you may find your preference in a beast. (laughs) Your speck. Let me use the letters. The letters. The letters language. She's not my speck. (laughs) <laughs> he's not my spe- he's not my speck I think that's the one that is raining now the person is not my speck anyway can I tell you that you may find your speck in a beast your speck that thing you are calling your speck you may find it in where in a beast but unfortunately, it's when you go home and open the package. So, the Bible says, a prudent wife is from the Lord. He that findeth. That means, you see, He that find it, I've dealt with the issue of mar- divorce. I'm not trying to, we're trying to now look at something else. Now, you also remember I told us that marriage is not for everybody. Do you remember that? Yes, marriage is not for how many people? Yes, it's not for everybody. Please find out if you have the gift of singleness. I think we read it that day. Yes, or the gift. Find it out. And I told you one of the, one of the, the, signs to know that you have the gift of singleness if your manhood is not working. The physical one and the spiritual one. If you don't like nonsense, it's possible you also have the gift of what? 
<laughs> How many of you don't like nonsense? Can, I, can you raise your hand? They won't raise their hand again. How many of you don't like, you can't tolerate nonsense? Raise your hand. Raise it. Let me confirm you, gift of singleness. And I will send you to the island of Patmos. That's where you're going to live. No, no, no human being will trouble you. You will only be fellowshipping with angels. <laughs> you don't want to go again. I will send you to that. That, that place, heaven, the, what you'll be hearing, come up here. Come up here. Come up here. That's the only, you will hear nonsense. Only thing that you'll be hearing is come up here. To, they said Toby and Lazarus, come up here. Come up here. Come up. If I when you also come here, you will see here another come up here. You go here, you see here, come up. <laughs> you just be ascending and ascending. Glory, glory. <laughs> and in that technology, there is no rubbish. <laughs> I guarantee you, no nonsense. <laughs> what you just be hearing, come up here, come up. Here. Okay, you know, you know, you know, in your mind, you see sinners singing or a beautiful music. You see, you think the person will be singing every day. <laughs> you think, you think, you say, once I marry this person, Kai, heaven. Who, who just be who just be singing you na, 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 na. he will sing you out of the bed <laughs> sing you to bed and, and when you come like this you say that anytime I'm I'm sad once I just see her she will just sing you don't know that the time they will go you see if he sing him his noise <laughs> the thing will be sounding like. Or you, or you say, I've married a comedian. You're making me laugh. <laughs> say, this brother is it's funny. He's always making people laugh. If I marry him, I, I'll be laughing. It'll be laughing gas all the way in our house. <laughs> you, you are thinking the person is always in that mood. <laughs> We, I hope Sam is always singing for you at home. You always... <laughs> you just be doing praise robot. <laughs> carry me, they go. Papa, carry me, they go. They go. <laughs> Maybe somebody will be eyeing Raph now. You are thinking that every time you just... Where is that song? Give me one of those their songs. Cut it short. Gara no be to... You are thinking... Or when you marry Godwin now, you think Godwin will just be playing keyboard for you. Godwin will say, shall we pray? <laughs> Okay, you think if married last us, I would say, let's ascend, 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 ascend. <laughs> you see, <laughs> I'm just saying signs of that you have gift of what? Singleness. If you are if you have not, you say, see, nobody can step on my toes. You can't step, you have gift of what? How many of you, they can't step on your toes? No, there are people that can't step. They say, no, I don't take, you can't step on my toes. Please, you have gift of what? I'm just, maybe I'll, be, I'll give you a dose here of those signs. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you tick it, when you tick it, tick it, tick it, then you score yourself. Until you're able to migrate, then you know that it's possible to migrate from gift of singleness to marriage. Now, I also told you that 
most time, in fact, the best is that, oh, our time is, is almost up. I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be closing. Is that, don't just focus on marrying the right person. Focus on being the right person. Don't write, don't say, list. Yeah. You know, you go to some place, they teach you, say, write all the things, qualities you want in the person. Anyway, when you write those things, you, first of all, the way to start with those qualities, you begin to check your own life. I like somebody who is always smiling. You, are you smiling? Okay. <laughs> you say, I, I, I want somebody who is tall. Are you tall? Okay. I want somebody who is a virgin. Are you a virgin? <laughs> okay. <laughs> They say, where did they get this pastor from? I'm just telling you. <laughs> you, you say you are looking for a virgin, but you, <laughs> we don't even know who you are. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Anyway, I'm just you. Just be thinking, is it not? Mm-hmm. You say I want somebody that, oh, oh, it's very simple, nice. Are you? So anyone you see you don't have, you don't deserve the person. <laughs> because, you see, you know the problem is that then, if you don't have those things, you are going to change the person. You say, I want somebody who is organized. Nice. Are you organized? Are you not the one that your pants may be, you soak clothes for two weeks. Can I take census? <laughs> eh? Some of you, you soak, you soak clothes. Two weeks. <laughs> some said the, 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 the thing will ferment. In fact, some of you, you find out that even the clothes, when you finish washing, you are still smelling. Because you will soak clothes. For two weeks. Soak you. You pile it. Pile it for two years. Two years. Two months. Three months. The thing is overflowing. It's, it's overflowing. So when, when it's time for service now, you now be looking for what to wear. You, you run to basket. <laughs> that, where you are going to get your on own this is it from? Dirty clothes basket. <laughs> That's where you go and <laughs> what are you using? You are using your nose to check the one that you are going to take, the one that is least dangerous. <laughs> you use your nose to you. They say, okay, this one is manageable. <laughs> you, you, you wear, wear. <laughs> Then, when you now come to church, as you lift up holy hands, <laughs> your neighbor is like, oh Lord, <laughs> when will you come? Come, Lord Jesus. <laughs> you don't know you're not walking in love like that. Somebody said that using Roland is walking in love. <laughs> it's part of walking in love. Are you with me now? If not, you you will you frustrate yourselves, choke. I want somebody. Somebody that will make me breakfast in bed. Be real. <laughs> Can you help me tell your neighbor, be what? Be real. Be real. It's good. Let's be romantic. We can make once in a while. Make, but if you are thinking that every day your husband will bring breakfast in bed. You see, it is important for us to Focus on being the right person, 
Now, for believers, let me tell you this. One of the major things that will make you a good wife or a good husband is to grow in the image and the stature of the measure of Christ. Are you with me? You see, the best marriage seminar is teaching people to become more like Christ. That's the best marriage seminar. The more like Christ we become, the more we're going to have a wonderful marriage. Are you with me? Are you with me? So, the goal here is for all of us to, to be striving to become more like what? Like Christ. And then you begin to, because, you see, because these things are not really possible in the flesh. I'm telling you. The kind of submission that God requires from a woman is not possible in the flesh. The type of love that God wants a man to love the wife is not possible in the flesh. You may do it for one week or do it for two weeks <laughs> and become tired. But you see, when that becomes your nature, are you with me? Are you with me? So, oh, You see, none of you is going to miss it in marriage. And I've told you, and I keep saying that, never marry somebody who is not subject to authority. Never marry somebody who is not subject to authority. For a man, a woman, one of the things you must measure is that you must measure how, how is that man submissive to the lordship of Christ. Because you see, that's where he's going to be taking his instructions from. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's where. Because the person, the Bible says you are supposed to submit to the person in how many things? How many things? How many things? No, let's say how many things? Some people don't believe these all things. <laughs> and you do you know all things? What is all things? What is all things? I didn't go to school now. What is all things? Let's understand. What's the division of all things? Vera, the way you're looking at me. Are you having issues with the all things? What is all things? <laughs> everything. What is everything? Minus nothing. Don't be quick to say that's right. Because that is also not a tool for oppression. Now, the, the thing that I'm, I, I want to... Don't go... When you go, you start oppressing your, your wife and say, didn't you hear what the Bible said? Did you wear... Now, you see, that is one of the reasons why you must be sure that the person that you are marrying to is subject to the lordship of Jesus Christ. If not, he can use that submit to all things for his personal selfish. He will not be thinking about the two people. He can just say all things, submit in all things, submit in all things. That would be his chorus. Every day. But you see, now can I also teach women this? I think that's where maybe we'll continue. You see, you see, we also, you know the problem sometimes that women have? If you want your husband to do something or you are not in agreement with what your husband is bringing to the table, what I mean bringing to the table is that Maybe when there is a discussion, hmm? you think. Now, I'm saying that also, even when you are trying to get him to do something, don't force it. 
Hey, what do I say? What do I say? Don't force it. See, let me tell you. There are many things you can win on your knees. There are many things you are trying to ensure that enforce. Mm -mm. See, if you, if you make, okay, this thing is there and the person is saying, leave it. Bring it. Eh? Bring it when? Another time. And when you want to bring it another time, there is nothing wrong with you consulting Esther. Do you know Esther? It's not your sister. <laughs> the Esther we're talking about is the Esther in the Bible. Did you see the wisdom how he, he drew a decision, made the king to change a decision that has already been made with his seal? Hey, did you, did you see the wisdom? He said, King, ah, there's something I want to. The king said, Make it, make the request to the half of my what? Kingdom. He said, No, it's not in the half of kingdom. I'm inviting you to a banquet. Hi. He finished that banquet. King said, Request anything. He said, No, King, tomorrow, another banquet. Now, you see, Esther probably would have made that request the first time, and the king will not even attend to what? Attend to it. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, let me also tell you something that happens. That there is a way if you make a suggestion and you also don't fight it. When that suggestion, when the husband goes his own way and fails, eh? and fail, 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 he will start recognizing. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Now, but you see, now, let me also tell you another, can I give you another wisdom? When he fails, don't use it against him. Are you with me? Now, let me tell you what you are going to be doing. If you, if you want to be using that and say, ah, that's how I told you not to do this, and you did it, you can see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's good for you. It's good. No. You know what will happen? You will now produce somebody who will not want to tell you something. I'm not saying this, but I'm trying to bring you what? Balance. Because, you know, you play a team. Are you with me? Are you with me? Come on, are you with me? You are a team. For the man too, when you want to take decision, you are not just thinking about yourself. You are thinking about us. And you must learn to what? Listen. Now, like I said, it is important for women to realize, for also, your suggestion, you are, you are equal partners, but there is a leader. Okay? Are you with me? There is what? There is a leader. So, it's just like, can I give you, it's just like when you are working in a company. You are working in an office. There is a head in your department. Is it not? Now, you can have a meeting and everybody makes input, you see? But the last decision rests with who? The what? The head of Now, even if you don't like the decision of the head of your department, do you go and fight the person? What do you do? So, why, is it that we don't, why can't we apply that in marriage? And let me tell you this. And if you, if you antagonize the head of your unit because he's making wrong decisions, you see that you're going to have problem in that place. True of us. True. Of. But if you don't antagonize, you make your impute. Very soon, they will start recognizing your what? Your impute. You can see. Let me tell you, eh? You need to know Christ to be able to submit. And let me end with this. Submission doesn't make you a second class citizen. Write it. <laughs> what did I say? Your beauty is in submission. Submission is, is more wonderful than Mary Kay. 
<laughs> is, did, somebody, did somebody hear that? That submission is more what? It's finer than Mary Kay. The woman that feared the Lord shall be what? Shall be praised. So, I want to believe that you know, generally we're just trying to attend to, the, you must know who, who, who is in that authority. And that is why, before you say I do, you must be able to understand that this person you are saying I do, to submits under the authority of Jesus Christ. This person can hear Jesus. Hey, are you with me? Is that person that can hear Jesus that will, even when, when he's not misbehaving, Jesus can tell the person, why did you talk to my daughter like that? Why did you address your wife like that? Go and apologize. Hey. And the person will come and do what? And the person will come and say, I am sorry. And sometimes, that I am sorry, he may go on his knees and say it. It doesn't mean anything. Eh? And he may back it up with chicken, suya, ice cream, taking out, shawarma, just to appease the gods. <laughs> just to. Well, it's not, we're not talking. You see, until we are solid believers, we can make good homes. Until we are believers that are yielded to the authority of Christ. Everyone is, is laboring for Christ to be formed in him. We can't have good homes. Believe me. If you make it mechanical, you, it will, you will, along the line you will get tired. So, men and brethren, one of the things I just want you to take home is that we must exalt the word of God above the what? Eh? Above what? The words of men. That's going to be the beginning of you succeeding. Embrace the word of God. Find out what is the manufacturer. What, how, what is his template? First of all, you know that you can't marry an unbeliever. I hope you know that. Eh? Because in this time and age, people are arguing many things. You just see and fall in love. I've told you we don't fall in love. We walk in love. And you know what the Bible says? The Bible never said marry the person that you love. The Bible actually said love you marry. <laughs> so that tells you that love is a choice. Love is a decision. Love is not a feeling. Are you with me? Mar the person you are married, do what? Love the person. Lavish the love of Jesus on the person. What do I say? Lavish it. Lavish it. And once we lavish it, you see, and as we are lavishing it, part of your mindset is not necessary to be expecting something in return. You can imagine two, two lovers Everybody is competing how to add, to, to provoke one another unto love. How would that home be? Huh? So let the word of God guide the things that we do. Guide us in our parenting skills. Guide us in the things that we do. And I want to end on this note by encouraging young people because you see the time that an age that we're living in is very dangerous. Are you with me? It's very dangerous. Many abnormal things are becoming normal. Many abnormal things. Now, can I encourage you? Please, in case you have some dated things in your phone, in your system, in any of your device, wipe them. Eh? What did I say? Wipe them. First of all, begin by deleting all the worldly songs. Yeah? Maybe one day we should do phone inspection. No, <laughs> it's okay. Now, can I also encourage young people? Can I encourage you? 
Now, it's part of the rules that we gave our children. Even though sometimes they disobey it. Sometimes we keep monitoring it. Now, don't ever be in a haste to dabble into people's devices. Are you with me? Why do I say that? Because sometimes... It might even be somebody you are meeting in church and you carry the person device and as you are opening it, the things you will see will blind your eyes. The things you will see will be the beginning of your trouble. Are you with me? This warning came strongly in my heart this evening. Because most times you see people as in the process of doing that, they, they come in contact with things they are not supposed to see. And that becomes a trouble. In fact, first of all, you even tell yourself, ah, this person is doing it. Me too. That means I can. Hey, are you with me? And then another thing is that, you see, once your flesh makes contact with those things, the desire is what? Is stirred up. In fact, the desire to want to go and check that thing again. Hey, how many of you know what I'm talking about? How, how many of you have been victims to what I'm saying? Raise your hand. Quickly. Can we desist from that? In fact, if you want something on somebody's, I'm telling you, you see, this is, in fact, for our children, they know that this is a, is a blanket. It's not an issue that this person is a brother. If there is anything, let the person open it and show you. But to carry people's devices and just go and be, you may see things that will trouble your what. Let me, let me take sense. How many of you have this thing, what, what I said now, you have experienced it. Can I see your hand? Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. You, you carried somebody's device or some, and you encountered something that is still troubling your mind. Can I raise your hand again? Raise it one more time. Because, you know, sometimes we need to take these things so that people will understand what we are saying. Did you learn your lesson? But there are, sometimes we don't still learn our lesson because I still see us carrying people's phone. Ah, let me, ah, you are checking. <laughs> Stay with your phone. It's only your own that you, if there is anything that is on another person's phone that you want to do, let the person, please, can you open this for me? Can you transfer this? Don't carry it and you say you are transferring by yourself. In the process of trying to do that, you may open something. And you know the problem is that sometimes when we see these things, we don't talk. Because these things drives in darkness. Hey, are you with me? Have you learned something today? Yes, sir. See, life is not all about ascension. This is ascension. No? This thing I've taught you now. This, as simple as it looks, can save you <laughs> a lifetime, can save your life. Are you with me? Yes, are you with me? Yes, Bow your heads as we pray. We're still going to come back to this subject, precept of a precept. We're bringing the service to a close. Can you, can, you, can you talk to God? First of all, can you appreciate him? Can you appreciate him? And I want you to make one prayer. Lord, help me to exalt your word above. Above the philosophies of men. Above the thoughts of men. Can you also ask the Lord to help you with the discernment spirit so that you can separate even something that made logical sense and it doesn't make spiritual sense? And one more prayer. Can you pray, Lord, help me to search the scripture. Help me to know you. Reveal yourself to me. Help me because if you don't know the word of God, how will you know when somebody, what somebody is saying that is making logical sense and it doesn't make spiritual sense. How can you know? Father, thank you. Lord, I ask for everyone under the sound of my voice. None of us will miss it in life. Lord, open our spiritual understanding. A fresh hunger for your word. A fresh hunger to know you. Lord, help us to exalt your word above everything 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 the philosophies of men our emotions 
our sentiments Lord I ask that everyone under the sound of my voice we come under the lordship of Jesus Christ we come under the authority of Jesus and the authority of the word in the name of Jesus Christ Lord I ask that anything that is wrong in our lives already by the reason of not submitting to your authority I decree restoration I decree restoration I decree restoration and we begin to decree new wines into our homes our homes will be a standard our homes will restore confidence in the marital institution in the name of Jesus thank you father thank you father in Jesus precious name we pray amen receive bring out your offerings